بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد سافروا تسحوا travel in travel there is health remedy healing waturzaqu and through this traveling it is a means of a person acquiring risk so don't only consider travel as a punishment only but it also has its benefits and advantages among the arabs it was considered as qatul masafal ba'id the traveling in a long distance as far why is it called safar travel because it opens up an wujuhil musafirina wa akhlaqihim travel exposes the true nature of people and their true temperament so a person traveling is one of the ways to identify and know a person with regards to the fuqaha in the jurisprudence definition it's traveling the shari distance where a person becomes a musafir traveler there are three types of traveling madhmum mahmud muba one which is madhmum which is forbidden and a person should abstain from it and he will be taken to task wa huwa alladhi yuaddi ila ma'siyah it is that travel which will be a cause for a person committing guna or sin so traveling to a destination where a person will engage in haram is forbidden or such a journey which a person may be a sinner for example a female traveling beyond the shari distance without a mahram the second one is mahmud where it is praiseworthy and beneficial fa huwa alladhi yuaddi ila manfa'atin diniyatin that it takes a person to the obedience of Allah where deen benefits so a person travels for hajj for umrah for making khidmat of the parents for joining family ties seeking knowledge at tafakkur fi khalqillah pondering on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise al khuruj fi sabilillah going out in the path of Allah to spread the deen of Allah amma al muba fa huwa alladhi yata'allaku bis sa'i fil ard talaban lir rizq wa ibasan travels for seeking his sustenance for business etc so this is which is permissible as long as in the journey he does not engage in ma'siyah and disobedience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about travel wa akharuna yadribuna fil ardi yabtaghuna min fadlillah we are the travel through the land seeking the bounties of Allah with regards to this travel in some mashayikh have said as safaru mizanul akhlaq traveling is a scale a measurement of your character so it exposes the true identity of a person others mashayikh has said al harakatu walud wa sakun aqir that in the movement in the traveling it's a means of having more progeny and being stagnated and not traveling may make a person barren amongst the fadail and the virtues ulama have listed min ajaib al amsar traveling the different cities and looking at the marvels which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spread on the earth wa bada'i al aqtar 
ومحاسن الآثار إن جايزين the beautiful remnants ما يزيده علما بقدرة الله وحكمته where a person increases his knowledge of the قدرت of Allah and the wisdom of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ويدعوه إلى شكر نعمته and a person after seeing the greatness of Allah will be grateful for the bounties of Allah. It also is a means of collecting experiences. وَيَفْتَهُ المذاهب. By a person traveling, he sees the different lands, the different forms of progress, and it opens up to a person other avenues. Likewise, it strengthens the body. It dispels laziness. It removes grief. وَيَتْرُدُ الْأَسْقَامِ it also dispels sickness. So amongst the Ash'ar, which the Mashaykh have said, وَسَافِرْ فَفِي الْأَسْفَارِ خَمْسُ فَوَائِدِ There are five benefits in traveling. تَفَرُّجُ كَرْبٍ So the removal of difficulties. وَاكْتِسَابُ مَعِيشَةٍ And earning livelihood. وَعِلْمٌ وَآدَابٌ A person travels for knowledge. He is, he is his... Uh, uh, avenue of knowledge increases and it widens, he broadens his horizons and he learns a lot of etiquettes and sitting in the company of the ulama traveling to those scholars a person finds a lot of benefit but when traveling we have to be very cautious like when you buy a house look at the neighbor because he'll be your companion for life likewise وَاتْلُبِ الرَّفِيقِ قَبْلَ الطَّرِيقِ And seek your companion before the travel, before embarking on a journey. So be very cautious who you pick as a travel companion. This person may compromise your safety and put you at risk. So if you perceive any danger or any actions, then warn them and uh, part ways if needed. That's why Nabi alayhi salatu was salam encouraged having a good companion and not even traveling alone. لو أن الناس يعلمون من الوحد ما أعلموا ما صار راكب بليل واحدة. If people knew the possibilities and what I knew of the possible harms in traveling during the night, they would not have embarked on a journey. So the unseen ghaybi system which Allah has preserved and protected us from. That's why individually to travel alone is not healthy and good. Always try to be two or more. And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam also when he made his shirah did not travel alone. So he chose Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anh for his companion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this time as an amana, this iman, iman as an amana. We need to look after it properly and prepare. That's why it is said beautifully, storms make trees deeper roots. Storms make trees deeper roots. So we're witnessing different occurrences globally, different situations. And a believer by seeing these situations, by hearing of the conditions, it should make him stronger in preparing in all aspects. So we have the potential. Unfortunately, we do not take lesson and we use our potential in avenues which are not beneficial. So there was a story of a judge who was looking at the accused and he said, do you admit breaking into the dress, the clothing store? So he admitted, yes, your honor. So the judge asked him, and why was that? So he replied, because my wife wanted a dress. She insisted. She wanted a dress. So I got it for her. So the judge looks at his notes and he says, but it says here that you broke into the same store four nights in a row. Did it once? We can understand it. But the same store, four nights in a row. So he replied, yes, sir. She made me exchange it three times. She made me exchange it three times. So where, what you are doing, how far you are going, 
you won't realize it and by the time you are too late it's game over so traveling will have to travel information is key so when you arrive in a country go to authorities go to the local stations etc and find out where are the dangerous risky areas likewise when you check in in your baggage in your check-in baggage edc's because in a foreign country you may not be able to uh, take certain gear which you may in your home country so what is allowed in that country those edc items is something like a tactical pen may save your life and it's legal it's it's not something that's complicated to carry it's not even visible so at least the thought processes for my protection family self preservation this is important wherever we go sometimes we diarize and customize our security when it suits us never ever let your guard down so some uh, countries have different restrictions different laws so we need to know what what our limitations are then some people need medication as well so whatever medication you are taking get a letter from your physician because they may consider it, think it to be contraband it may catch you in trouble may cause you to leave and in inconvenience likewise your patterns also don't fix patterns know the different entrance and exit routes how many lifts are there where are all the lifts which floors do they go where are the emergency exits where are the fire hydrants where are the fire escapes so all of these things are taken for granted like when you board the plane and the emergency protocols people don't pay attention we don't even know where under the sea they've kept certain items for our preservation so we have to be vigilant likewise there are beggars on the street also it's good to be generous but many a beggar is an informant they want to give information where your valuables are what cards you have so that stay away likewise merchants traders would come and sell petty items for cheap prices uh, that again they want to see where you put your hand where do you take out your items where do you keep it they work for syndicates and that is the bait so be cautious when you are leaving as well nobody should know that you are traveling as well some people have the habit of leaving their car outside pack their bags and struggle to 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 pack all the bags before they leave everybody knows you go in on holiday if you can do it in the confines of your garage or your yard that is ideally better likewise make the mudakara with the family don't make jokes don't make false threats about security issues some people's fuses are quite short you will cross in the x-ray scanner it buzzes security what do you have on you sir and you use certain words which could get you arrested so the joke that you're making is not worth the joke so security issue jokes should never be made likewise anything to do with cash you should be more vigilant so if you needed to go to a forex bureau then firstly you shouldn't be having all your cash on you secondly is when you are going to use a certain amount and keep small denominations which is accessible and which you think so you can lose so for example let's say a person goes with a hundred dollars and you've got 50 20 20 10 that could be loose when you buy an item take out the 10 take out the 20 etc but not all your notes at one place the more bulk notes should be kept securely in a hidden pouch etc likewise make sure that uh, your phone communication are you going to get roaming in that country if it's too expensive are you going to buy a sim card your your phone do you have a tracking can you activate it does somebody know your whereabouts have you tested it some phones come with the feature of a lost phone stolen phone so you could activate it you can delete all the valuable information you could track the phone and the thief but many people don't even remember the password for that app they don't even know the name of the app so when you bought it once you did it you activated it but you have never tested it so simulate once in 3 months as often as you think it needed before you travel simulate a stolen phone scenario and see if you can track it likewise a trustable neighbor to remove the the papers 
to see if the grass grows too long if you've gone for a long time for the grass to be trimmed for the bushes to be cleared out some people are very uh, facebook instagram bloggers who love to promote their uh, every day lives so this is going to be very dangerous firstly for 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 nazar ain etc and from thieves as well so burglars use social media sites to know whether you are at home or not and then all your important documents as well so they have uh, extra photos have uh, all your documents scanned and send it on an email as well besides hard copies so like that you know if everything goes you've still got an electronic medium where you can access all that information and when a person is uh, in a foreign country sometimes you want to go into an internet cafe so there's a lot of hackers out there your your banking information don't ever surf do transfers from an internet cafe likewise credit card payments from those cafes so be very cautious when you are using your credit card keep your eyes on these cards all the time this is very common uh, where the credit card scheme in where they copy your cards and uh, use it and they sell that information sometimes when a person checks into the hotel he doesn't bother you reach the hotel you tired you leave your bags to the bell boy who will move your bags no track it and trace it how many pieces of luggage you have five take out five move with the five and your valuable items should be on you all the time you should never leave your eyesight anywhere at any time during your journey generally in a hotel room as well for some reason the husband goes out to get some needs and necessities the lady is alone so if some service had to come and try to request them that it should be a female and not a male then when we are booking rooms as well so make sure it's not in isolated areas of the berlin request rooms where there is a, a very heavy traffic more movement then rooms as well don't ever book a room on the first floor why because it's easy for somebody to come through the steps bypass the cameras get to your room so they know which rooms in which hotel they could rob uh, dress like a bell boy different options so on the first floor maybe even the second floor you may be at risk likewise anything above the sixth floor we shouldn't be uh, stay in why the views are good the higher you go the better it looks but in a situation you cannot escape it is difficult as well and the fire hydrants the the ladders that they use they cannot get above the sixth story so if you need to get out for a certain reason you will not be able to escape so that's very important so third fourth fifth floor try to stick to those denominations many a time we have certain things for our benefits but we don't check it and we take it for granted for example the phone in the room is it operational the smoke detector is it operational so these are small items which are important some people even carry the smoke detectors which are portable smoke detectors and place it in the rooms which you can connect to the wifi as well because your children are there alone uh, sometimes you can even take this portable uh, cameras and uh, sound it 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 it, it records as like a video camera it has sound as well you could activate it connect it to the wifi and you could monitor what's happening in the room so for some reason you left the children are alone as well you will have access to that information and whenever if even if you in the room put the do not disturb sign at the door if you can't be them confuse them likewise to maximize the the time that you are there at the place make sure that you don't trust anybody whether it's the employee whether it's dressed properly when you get to the hotel check where all the cctv cameras are focusing speak to the security see if they are viewing those cameras if it's a 12 hour shift 24 hour shift and where's the blind spots so if you are in a situation and you have little time which camera should i go to to get and draw help 
Likewise, sometimes you book a room and this is interconnecting rooms. Try to stay away from those rooms because your room is accessible from another side. Somebody could have a key, have access to that. And when you are not there, they will know about it. So um, interconnecting rooms, stay far away from that. Likewise, even if you do leave your hotel room, keep on the anashi, the qiraat, you got this port portable Bluetooth devices, play Anashid, so nobody will know whether you are there or not. So these are different simple steps which we can make Amal on. We will be traveling and one day we will be traveling to a longer journey which is in the journey of Akhirat. So likewise both journeys we need to prepare. The Amal for today is the Sawwaku, utilize the Miswak, it has multiple benefits. It even sharpens the eyesight. Use the miswak. I use the miswak so much and I've been encouraged that Jibreel came to me. He advised I utilize the miswak. I was afraid a time may, may come where it may be made compulsory. If I would not have fear or worry or concern that it would be difficult on my ummah, then I would have made it compulsory. And what is my personal routine? That I make so much miswak that I'm afraid of losing my front teeth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil